I learned more today with Texas history. Now, speaking of birthdays, we're right in the middle of a streak right now, folks. A Texas birthday streak. This is June 20th. From June 12th through June 22nd, five Texans who went as far in their chosen gift of perfection, profession as they could celebrated birthdays. Case in point, this past Monday was Waylon Jennings' birthday. Now, funny thing, all five of these very prominent Texans, they were either sons of sharecroppers or sons of military people or a degree of separation in between. But Waylon Jennings was the son of a West Texas cotton sharecropper. Now this coming Monday, one week, now always remember this, there's a week separation of Waylon Jennings' birthday and the guy that's coming up this Monday, who's the son of an Air Force major, this coming Monday, the 22nd of June, is Chris Christopherson's birthday. Mm. Yeah. A lot of y'all, uh, today is the birthday of uh, a couple of people. One of them brings about a bit of sadness because I actually knew this young man, so we back behind him. Um, we lost him almost nine years ago. It's coming, you know, almost nine years ago, it's coming end of the year. But today, Eddie Shaver would have been 47 years old. And, of course, this string started off with a, another military-type person who celebrated a birthday on June 12th this year. He's the 41st President of the United States. His name is George Bush. Not George W. Bush, but George Bush. Now, on his 85th birthday the other day, George Bush jumped out of an airplane and he landed on the ground right next to George W. Bush. He was there waiting for him to land. Now, he started this trend, I think, on his 75th birthday and then he did it on his 80th birthday then he did it the other day on his 85th birthday. He says he plans to do it on his 90th birthday. But when he did it on his 75th birthday, he did it to celebrate an event that had happened to him in World War II when he jumped out of a plane that was about to crash and he saved his landing within the midst of the enemy and somehow survived. For this, George Bush was acclaimed a war hero. Now key on this date, he was born June 12th, 1924. June 12th. If you were a man, if you were a male species born in 1924, no matter how affluent your parents were, how smart you were, how handsome you were, how tall you would grow to be as an adult, you shared something with a common man. That means by the time you were between 18 and 20 years old, you would be fighting a war if you were a male person. You would be fighting a war if you were born. You would be fighting a war if you were born in 1924. Where's Guthrie Kennard to write that down? You write it down, Phil Wallace. Brad, you're a songwriter. You would be writing a war if you were born in 1924. Now, eight days, eight days after George Bush was born, a man born up in the Northeast who claims he came to Texas as fast as he could, which was probably after World War II. There was a young man born over in Hunt County, a little town called Kingston. Now, this young man was the son of a sharecropper. There was no affluence there. And he would grow up to be about one foot shorter than George Bush would grow up to be. But you see, George Bush went through a few channels, it said, to become acclaimed as a war hero. This little guy who would grow up to become five feet five and a half was turned down by the Marines and the Navy because he only weighed 110 pounds. He wouldn't need to have any congressman acclaim him to be a war hero. If everybody ever was the real deal of a war hero, it was a young man from Hunt County named Audie Leon Murphy. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Audie Murphy worked all his life. He had no play. He never even had time to play a game of baseball. All he did was work out in the cotton fields, hoeing and raking and picking cotton. He went through the fifth grade. When he was 16 years old, or 15, his dad left him.
But he was told, this is very sad, when a, a man walks off and leaves his child, he was one of nine, or there were nine in his family. He was the youngest of nine. The father just walked off and left. He was led to believe that his father had died. When he was 16, his mother did pass away. He was then raised by a lady named Corrine, who was his aunt in Farmersville in Collin County. And then the war broke out. All he wanted to serve his country. That he was five feet five and a half. He weighed 110 pounds. And he had this little baby face that Hollywood would one day embrace. But at the time, nobody would embrace it. He looked like he was about 12 or 13 years old. He was rejected. But Audie had a certain instinct inside him. You could almost feel it starting to swell up. He joined the Army. He took his basic training at Camp Walters. It became Fort Walters out there in Mineral Wells. And actually because of the Army, for the first time in his life, he was pretty much guaranteed three square meals a day. He was guaranteed a roof over his head. He even got to play his very first baseball game. This is a fact. When he joined the Army, he got to play his first baseball game out at Camp Walters. And guess what happened? His first time at bat, Audie Murphy hit a home run. That was a sign of things to come, folks. He took his second infantry training at Fort Meade, Maryland, and then he arrived on February 20th, 1943, in North Africa, assigned to Company B, 1st Battalion, 15th Infantry Regiment, 3rd Infantry Division. Is that big division, that famed 3rd Division, worked its way northward. Over the next 15 months, they worked their way out of North Africa, into Sicily, past Sicily, into Italy. Finally, by early October 1944, they had worked their way into southeastern France. Audie Murphy had gone from Private E1 to a Sergeant E6. Pretty well rapid advancement in 15 months, but it was wartime. Now, Audie Murphy had a theory about war, particularly about combat in war. Elite. Audie Murphy believed, yes sir. Take a breath. That's better.